also hello, I'm Sarah. And I, I turn the other way from. Um, I'm director of the Blue Garden in Newport, Rhode Island. This is 1917 taken by Francis Benjamin Johnston. Um, this, these are the clients, Arthur Curtis and Harriet Parsons James. What's important about them is that they hired Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. and his firm, the Olmsted Brothers. It was um, Jr.'s father who designed Central Park. A lot of people think that it was the same person who worked in America for 100 years, but it was actually a father and a son. Uh, this was the estate, and um, this is the mansion. Excuse me, Judith. This is the Blue Garden. This is a large farm behind them, so you can get an idea of the scale of this garden. This is one of the pools, and it's actually Persian-influenced. We have um, a photograph of the carpet that this border was taken from, and it's connected by a rill to a lily pond. So this is also a very structural garden like Blythewood is. Um, these are photographs, again, Francis Benjamin Johnston of the Blue Garden plantings. And um, this is 1920. And when we first uh, came to the Blue Garden, this is what remained of it. This is the North Pergola. A large contemporary home had been built here. The pools remained. They were the only things. But it was completely taken over by Norway maples and other invasive material. So you can see. Um, you know, this is what the garden here at Blythewood, very similar um, deteriorated conditions. And um, we had been told it was the most important garden in Newport, kind of scratched our heads. But um, so important things, your historical um, documentation that James already referred to has been done. Arlene Levy was our uh, landscape our, homestead historian, brilliant woman who found all of the original drawings, correspondence, plans that we use to recreate this garden. It also takes a team of people, the client, of course, our patron, Arlene, the landscape architects, engineers, construction people, and uh, landscape contractors. So it takes a team with a client to rebuild one of these gardens. This was the 1911 plan of this estate. This is the, where the Blue Garden is. Uh, the Olmsted vision for this was an informal garden, but um, Harriet, the client, really wanted a formal garden, so she insisted on this garden that, that is what we have today, which is similar to the one here, Italianate, symmetrical. And I just want to show you quickly how we were able to use from the archives the original plans and drawings and able to study them to understand uh, you know, how, how this whole estate had been put together and original or some of the beginning drawings from the Olmsted firm of this Blue Garden. And then the drawings for these structures. So what's important is to really unearth as many historic documents as you possibly can in rebuilding this garden to really understand it. And again, this is the Persian carpet that, um, that the border was taken from for this pool. Um, sometimes we only had sketches, and the architects had to just use the sketches and redraw all of these and bring them up to contemporary code. The contractor was very proud of saying this garden has been built for the next 100 years. Uh, again, gates. And then this is the final planting plan from the Olmsted firm. It had about 83 plants in it. Um, we had to simplify it for maintenance. We've been talking about that. And our idea was to bring in larger fields of the same plant instead of six or seven plants being in this area. So we call this our fields option. And um, it, it worked. Uh, this is planting the Blue Garden. And this is 2014. So. Um, and I just have to pay tribute to our patron, Doris Hamilton, who um, is, was her calling to rebuild this garden. She passed away about a year and a half ago, and we're now part of the Hamilton Family Charitable Trust. We miss her terribly. She sits on my shoulder every time I'm in the Blue Garden and tells me it's too purple. But that's another, <laughs> that's another topic. So now I'm going to show you that before things get better in this garden, they're going to get a whole lot worse. This is a a short video of the construction. 
of the Blue Garden, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's just been a mystique all through these years, and then suddenly to end up with it has been just the most exciting thing. The old reflecting pools were still here, and about 80% of the old garden walls, some of the columns still intact, and some of the blue's still here, but for the most part, the, re the rest of it had gone by the wayside. So it became obvious that if we you know, purchased the property, tore down the house, we could you know, recreate and put back what was missing of the original garden. The whole site looked like that weedy mess with all of these invasive plants, including Norway maples, honeysuckle, privet, now that the big ledge outcroppings are being revealed, yep. you see how wonderfully fitted into this area yes, this I, is. Yeah, right. Eighty-five, ninety percent of that house will be recycled. All the material will go back to Vanagro's Recycling Center. They will process everything. Pick out any metal that's in it, any plastic, any paper. All the concrete will get recycled and reused for gravel, yep. People are restoring houses. It's the same thing. If you find an old house and you want to restore it, you uh, do a lot of research. You find all the old pieces and put it back together. And that's really what this is. What we're doing is setting up a shoring system and prepping for the retaining walls on the Blue Garden at the property line. We're basically retaining about an eight foot grade from one to the other, giving them enough room so they can rebuild the garden again. There was a decision that the cryptomeria, although they were, some of them were part of the original planting, were never meant to be allowed to grow to the size that they were. And based upon the quality of the trees, the straightness of the trunks, the lack of knots, the lack of branches, we made a decision that uh, we should try and use the yield from that lumber to build items on the Blue Garden replicating what was here before. When you saw that open, it's going to be coffee colored. It's, it's going to look like French walnut, actually, uh -huh. but a soft wood. It's a good project you're doing. This is the whole plumbing run to make the fountains work, which I was researching the other day into these valve pits. We actually hooked the garden hose up to it. We got a couple of them to work on this end. work on historic buildings and historic objects and focus our attention on the conservation of historic building materials. This is basically a small piece of that concrete that is embedded in a piece of polyester resin. You can see it. Just this sample shows the original salmon colored coating. Our role was to figure out how to create the missing elements with materials that were either replicating what had been there historically or were similar enough in appearance that once the garden was restored, it would look the way it had largely when it was originally done in 1913. So the North Pergola has been excavated, and the base of stone and drainage has been laid underneath, and the formwork is ongoing right now. While that's going on, we're finishing up the enclosures so that we are not limited in terms of the time and weather to work on the foundation, and it will be there for the masons. The 
entire North Pergola is, is built from the cryptum areas, which we harvested from the site last year. We also have some stonework going on. In the middle section of the Blue Garden, where the water features are, the reflecting pool, the runnels, we have a restoration company, Haven Restoration, cleaning up the old original uh, stone that was, that was used for the fixtures, also putting it back together. The South Pergola, as you can see now, is under construction. On top of these columns will be the wood structure, and in the middle, on this radius area, will be round columns, which is identical to what was here from 1912, from the Olmsted brothers. It was a collaboration of a lot of different crafts and disciplines in order to create this entire space that was their landscape, and in particular, the specialties that were involved in creating something as unique, intricate, complex, and difficult as the Blue Garden. Once the garden is planted, and the jets are on, it will look so simple, like it's always been here. I am so thrilled. Everybody worked together to pull it together on the scale of one to 10. I'd say it's probably right after the great-grandchildren, so it's a 10. <laughs> I think the important thing to me has been the fun of hearing how the original garden was put together. The goal for the Blue Garden is to recreate it so the public could see it. Just the design, the thought, the, the joy. I think that the Jameses had in making it and presenting it to their friends it just grabs me to be part of it and be able to save it. That's the fun part. And I do like to save things. <laughs> <laughs>